Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. This is uh, GHS InfoSec. And in this video, uh, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be showcasing some of the challenges from the GuidePoint Security CTF that took place this past week, sponsored by GuidePoint Security. Uh, they usually do some pretty good CTFs every quarter. Uh, this might be a little bit sloppy. I had to record the screen and did not have my microphone with me when I did this. So uh, I'm having to watch the video and narrate the audio as we go along. So probably be some sloppy cuts here. I do apologize about that. Um, I ended up coming in sixth place overall. Um, that may have changed. I didn't really get to play the last few hours of the challenge, but I was on the board. I was happy. I wanted to be on the board. That was my goal. And uh, I met that goal. So very cool. Uh, the, the categories for this one were all completely web challenges. There were only six. I ended up solving four of them, as you can see here. So we're going to go and look at the responsive challenge first. And we have our Docker container. We're just going to take a look at the website that comes up for our uh, instance. And we get this login page and it says access to this site is restricted please go away we have a username and a password field that we have to uh, submit in order to get authenticated and find our flag so just taking a quick look at the source code um, i didn't see anything much here but just for the camera i wanted to go ahead and capture the moment you never know what you'll find in the source code it can be a great resource for uh, finding all sorts of uh, useful information such as service versions and whatnot so here we're talking about uh, just kind of brute force in the password just password guessing admin 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 password and as you can see these did not work we get a message of sorry and uh, we're going to try a little SQL injection see if we can add a single quote to the username parameter and that did not give us any error so there's no indication of single SQL injection so I believe here I was trying that in the password field with the single quote and the word password. But once again, we didn't get any kind of error. So there's no indication that this is SQL injectable. So we're gonna look at uh, Burp Suite. We're gonna send a request over there. That way we can get a little bit better understanding of what we're dealing with. So while this is getting set up, um, just real quick, once again, I am narrating this as we're watching it so uh, I do apologize if this <laughs> it seems a little discombobulated and doesn't make sense but we're pasting our URL and our scope for burp suite so that way we make sure we only intercept requests that are to that URL and then over in the browser we have foxy proxy set up for burp and we're going to set that up as well so now when we send our username and password burp will intercept that request and it'll give us a chance to look at the response or excuse me the the request before we send it and examine the response and this is a post request with the user equal to admin and password equal to admin we're going to forward that over to the repeater so then we can continually manipulate and uh, play with our requests so over in the right we have our response and once again we see our message of sorry but then there's this header this is X powered by Express. So this tells us that this is using the Express framework, which is part of the Node.js web framework. So a quick Google search will reveal that. And so we can see that Node.js web application uh, is what Express uses. So this here was just some documentation. I didn't really take too much time to go through all this. I'm just kind of showing the site where you can get a little bit more information if you're interested in learning about Node.js. But I was looking for what type of uh, database was used on the back end. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure, but I was thinking maybe something like MongoDB or some type of NoSQL. Uh, as it turns out, there actually is uh, quite a few different types of databases you could integrate with Node.js. Uh, just some examples here you can see are MongoDB, LevelDB, CouchDB, and so on. So uh, these are kind of the potential candidates for our SQL injection in this challenge, but I was uh, more interested in MongoDB because that tends to be the um, preferred NoSQL, the go-to for a lot of CTFs or, you know, just in general. So... Just some more examples of trying to poison the parameters and uh, test for SQL injection, but 
uh, just demonstrating they're not working. So now we've got to figure out how we can do that with MongoDB. And uh, yeah, I forgot I tried the the good old or equals or one equals one. <laughs> we've got a URL encode that, and we send the request, and that didn't work either. So yeah, we got to try something else. All right, so click Google search on MongoDB SQL injection will hopefully get us some type of uh, information that we can work with. So uh, Mongo is typically referred to as uh, NoSQL, which seems a little bit odd, but it it's, that's just what it is, I guess. <laughs> some things are just over my head. Uh, so a typical SQL injection will look like this here, or a SQL injectable statement would look like something like this here, where in the back end it would say select asterisk from items where ID equals something, and it starts the query with an open quote. But, um, and that's where you would typically start poisoning your parameters. You would just close that quote off. And in this instance, uh, it looks like we're using a dollar GTE, which would be greater than or equals. Um, so, some type of, uh, it seems like some PHP. Uh, syntax to me a little bit um, so just going through some more NoSQL injections with PHP uh, they're leveraged quite a bit it always allows the user to get query string inputs into arrays by changing the URL parameters into parameters with array brackets so we can see an example of that here where we have the parameter parameter in brackets and um, that is on the left side of the equal sign that's something important that you'll want to note anytime you're testing for a NoSQL injection with Mongo. And uh, we have a couple of more JavaScript examples here. And this last example here with the dollar sign any, that's actually what I ended up looking for because um, we, all, we know the password of admin did not work. So we had to find a way to test for something that is not equal to admin. And in, in the MongoDB example, or in this example, that's going to end up being dollar sign any. Uh, not many people actually solve this challenge, and um, it took me a while to do it myself. And once I did, I was uh, very excited. But um, we have our flag here, GPS CTF, in this long thing with Welcome Back Administrator. Anyway, uh, that's all I got for this one. Uh, I've got a few more videos to post about this guide point security CTF, and uh, really appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe, and uh, thanks for stopping by.